I'm very happy, of course, to be here to talk about my book uh, to a, a crowd of people who I'm expecting tonight to be all, of all kinds and stripes. I'm expecting people with a connection to the condition and the general public. And looking forward very much to doing this early uh, flag waving for the Huddersfield Literature Festival. Keep Clear is my story, really, of living with Asperger's syndrome uh, without knowing it until I was 55 when I was diagnosed. Um, and as with many people with Asperger's syndrome, they, they know something's not right. I've always known there's something funny about me. Uh, but uh, it's not until many people have mental problems, either small crack up, uh, to put it in street terms, I had a, just had a panic attack and I went along to my doctor and in the outcome in the end was that I was formally diagnosed as having Asperger's syndrome, which is part of the autism spectrum. Asperger's syndrome is part of the autism spectrum, which is a, an umbrella term that covers, um, <clears throat> it's about your attitude and your way of dealing with the world and seeing the world. People with autism, including Asperger's, tend to, um, they, 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 look, they, they look inwards in some ways. Um, they think about themselves and there are two main ways of diagnosing it. One is um, social problems, difficulties getting on with other people, uh, social problems, interacting, parties are a, a torture, um, everyday dealings with people at work, at school, um, very, very difficult for many people with Asperger's and we learn to deal with it in different ways because we're all very different um, and uh, that's the first thing. And the other thing is a drive for sameness. We like things to be the same and that leads to an interest uh, or a drive to look into repeatedly into the same things, to go deep into subjects. And many people with Asperger's syndrome have um, they're experts in, in particular things and they can be strange subjects like deep fat fryers or the American presidents or systems, that's the thing, systems, whether it's plumbing or the human body, people with Asperger's and with autism generally love systems. The book is, uh, it starts with my um, crack up and then we go um, into a chapter which sets out the um, nuts and bolts of Asperger's syndrome and, and autism as, as a, a bigger subject so that people are clear about what we're talking about. And then I start in an old-fashioned chronological way with my birth and I go all the way up to today. My, uh, my problems at school, my terrible troubles at university, I try to end my life. That's a very common thing with people with Asperger's. Something like um, two-thirds of the people with Asperger's report feeling suicidal and having considered actually doing it and one third have tried it. Um, with women it's slightly different. Um, the, there's the Maudsley Hospital uh, recently said that they think that something like 35 percent of their anorexia um, patients or people with anorexia are actually autistic. So that's a big number and that's newish, res newish research and so that needs to be looked into I think. I was very keen when I wrote Keep Clear to, um, to speak to the general audience, which is a mysterious sort of audience, but the general, the general reader who's not an expert, maybe doesn't have any connection with autism or Asperger's syndrome. At the same time, I knew that I would have to be talking also to those people with a connection, maybe someone in their family who's autistic, and it's a very heritable thing. You catch it from your parents, and often brothers and sisters and cousins have um, autism traits. Um, so I was covering a broad field, but mainly it's for the general reader. I wanted to tell a story that was leavened with humour, because a lot of books I found a little bit heavy going. Um, uh, so I wanted humour, lots of jokes in, in the book, or not jokes, but you know, amusing, uh, amusing asides and things. Um, but also a little, little look at the science, and really my story from from the beginning right up to today. I am a magician, I'm a, a hobbyist, I have done it semi-professionally in the past but it became a job and I, I wanted it to stay my hobby. Uh, but it's true I think that um, people, autistic people, chiefly men and boys, are attracted to magic. Again magic is a system, especially sleight of hand magic, 
but not exclusively. And there's definitely something about magic that attracts people like me. As far as I know, nobody's idolised me. I'm occasionally called things like a walking dictionary or um, other friendly, um, uh, jovial, um, not insults, you know, they're sort of, uh, it's a way of saying um, I admire this in you, but also, of course, um, weirdo, I was called for a long time. People complained about labels, but it was quite nice to get the, the label Asperger's because before that it had just been weirdo. And I think Asperger's is a better label than that.